Welcome back to Monday Mod Tips, I'm Captain Xavier, and as promised, the next couple of videos are going to be about lipos. The first one will be covering the basics of what is a lipo, why they are favored in the nerf community, what all the numbers mean, and then how to properly pair them with a motor. The next one will then be on proper um, care of lipo, because that is a very important topic. Uh, lipo batteries are favored in the nerf community because these batteries were specifically designed for the kind of applications that we are using them for. Namely, high power, high torque, high current motors. Uh, because these were developed largely for things like drones and RC cars, which are built entirely to use high torque, high speed, high current draw motors. And so when you're doing something with flywheels, these are definitely the better option because they can provide the current and they have the capacity to actually give you the performance that you're going to be wanting. Which is why it is highly encouraged that once you get to a certain level of modding, you really ought to switch over. But it is a, a fairly significant jump. The uh, care required and the extra you know, knowledge needed to use these safely um, does require some research. Uh, they do need to be charged carefully and they need to be discharged when not in use. Um, if you puncture them or you short circuit them, very bad things can happen. So you need to be very confident in your circuit before you plug one of these in. Never test with your LiPo. Test with a lesser battery and make sure that everything is working correctly and then test with your LiPo. Uh, and do the research on how to properly care for them. I will be going over that briefly, but there's probably a lot more you could know and so you should definitely do your research. Now, these are... Lithium ion polymer batteries. That is what LiPo stands for. They are lithium ion just like the previous ones, but unlike the previous ones, the electrolyte in these is a polymer rather than fluid based, which allows them to be lighter and more efficient, but it does make them somewhat more volatile. If you either puncture the cell or you short circuit the battery, these will react every bit as violently as any of the other lithium ion batteries will, and sometimes more so because they have a lot more capacity. So you do need to be very, very careful with them. These are also actually truly batteries in the traditional sense. Something like a AA is not truly a battery because it's only one cell. And originally the term battery referred to multiple cells in serial. Same, similar to having a, series, a battery of tests. It is a series of tests that you are given that are all built on each other. Or an artillery battery is a whole bunch of different artillery that all fire in serial um, to, to achieve a purpose. So the original definition would only apply, would only be a battery if it had multiple cells. Now, batteries have become so prevalent, so common usage, and when a word gets used wrong in our language enough by enough people, we simply change the definition. And so now the definition of a battery includes one or more cell. Uh, so these are now technically, officially batteries. But in the traditional sense, these would have been batteries because they have multiple cells. Now they do make single cell lithium polymer batteries, but we generally don't use those because they're only 3.7 volts. Every single cell is 3.7 volts in most um, LiPos. There are also ones that are the 3.2, and so you'll get slightly different numbers. Um, but all of these ones and most of the ones that you're going to see are going to be 3.7 volts per cell. So a 2S will be 7.4, a 3S will be 11.1, and a 4S would be 14.8. Uh, and they, they go up from there. Um, and yeah, so that'll tell you what your voltage is, and they'll generally have 3S or 2S, and the S refers to serial, because it's number of cells in serial. That's why they use S instead of C to denote the number of cells. It's the number of cells in serial. Um, so 2S, 3S, and really the only difference that that has is the voltage, as well as often the capacity, but not always, as we are going to see. These two are both, have the same capacity. Uh, they're both 1,000 milliamps, uh, but this one's 2S and this one's 3S, and that's just a matter of you wanted the same capacity, but you wanted different voltages. And it is, there is a huge variety, and that's why you need to make sure you know what all the numbers mean, so you get the right battery for your motors. The next number that we're going to look at is the capacity. And it'll generally be in milliamp hours. These ones have it uh, conveniently in um, amp hours as well. That's what the big number is, is the number of amp hours. This is one, or 0.95, so it's less, it's 950 milliamps. These ones both have one, they're 1000 milliamp, and this one's 2.2. .2. Uh, 
Uh, it is a big one, and it obviously has 2200 milliamp hours. And that will give you the capacity. How long, roughly, how long could you run this battery at a certain draw? And the bigger, obviously, the more it'll hold. Um, the next and final number is the C rating. And this is the discharge rate that the battery has. All of these are 65. Uh, but they come in multiple different options. You can get them in 20, 40, whatever, pretty much whatever you want. You can probably find a battery in that C rating. And for our applications, the higher the C rating, the better. You can't actually have too much. The motor will only draw as much as it is designed to take. And as long as your battery can provide at least that much, then you're set. It won't ever draw too much. Now your switches and your wiring also needs to be sufficiently rated for whatever amperage is being pulled through them, so you need to take all of that into account. To determine the amount of current that a battery can continuously put out, you multiply the C rating times the amp hours. Not the milliamp hours, you're going to divide it by a thousand to get the amp hours and multiply those two together. Now in these ones it's really easy because it's one. So these both have 65. That is the current that they can produce. This one's less than one, it's 90, or 0.95, so it comes out to about 61. And this one is 2.2, so it's more than double 65, and it actually comes to about 143. So this one can power a lot more motors at the same time than this one could, but they're the same voltage, and they have different capacities. <clears throat> you now are going to take all of those numbers, you're going to take that current number that you got, and your voltage, and you're going to look at those specs on your motors. So for instance, a Rhino motor is a 12 volt motor, or roughly thereabouts, so you're going to want a 3S battery. Um, the stall current, which is the amps that you need, is 7.8, which is well below the 65 that this one has, and way below the uh, 143 that this one has, so you're good to go. But for every motor you add, you have to add that together and the battery needs to have more than those combined. So if you have two, now you're looking at 15.6, uh, which again, still way below the 65. So um, you can run an awful lot of rhinos off of a conventional one, or you could get a much lower current draw LiPo, you could get away with a 40. Um, you could actually get away with a 20 if you really wanted to and still be able to run two Rhinos. Um, the more you get, the more you need. Uh, by comparison, the Michelle 2 motors are rated for 2S. They require less voltage, uh, but they have a much higher current. They take 18.8 .8 amps um, at stall. So running two of them now you're looking at a considerably higher current requirement. Now all of these are still capable of that. Um, but once you get into three, then you're really starting to push the limits on this one. Three of these is coming in at 54, give or take 55. And this is 61, so it's still enough. But at that point you're starting to push the limits there. Now if you look at something like the Fang revamps, they take 28. So they're four times the current of, an, of a Rhino, but still take less voltage. This is still a 2S motor, but you need a lot more. I could not run three fangs off of this battery. It does not have enough current for that. But I could run it off this one. I couldn't even run it off you know, this one. This one has too much voltage and you'd end up burning out the motor. Um, so you need to look at all the numbers. Voltage alone is not enough. Current alone is not enough. You need to look at both and pair. Now you can either pick your motor and then look up what batteries are good for it, or if you have a battery, you can then look up what motors will work with it. Either way works, as long as it all matches up. And any good distributor of motors and batteries are going to provide you with all that information. Now with the LiPos, it's written on the battery. You're not going to have trouble finding that. The motors, it can be sometimes somewhat difficult if the manufacturer or the person selling it hasn't gone out of their way to provide you that information, which is why I really um, like companies like um, Foam Blast and Out of Darts and Containment Crew. They give all the specs for all of the batteries and all of the motors that they provide. They even give you advice on which motors work best with which batteries and so on and so forth. Um, 
I think that pretty much covers all of the basics that I wanted to go over in this first video. Uh, there is a huge variety of options with LiPo. They come really small. These ones will fit into a Strife battery cage as long as you drumlet it out a little bit. Uh, the larger ones you start having to get into the expanded battery trays or replacing battery trays altogether. Um, Tier has these monstrous ones that are in the backpack. Um, so lots of different variety there and usually the companies again will have the specs on the dimensions of the batteries as well The really good companies will and you can figure out if it will fit into your battery housing There is also a variety of different connectors uh, These ones all have XT60 connectors. These ones have a smaller red connector uh, And there are also Dean connectors are very popular and there's a, a variety of other connectors And you just need to make sure that you've got the right ones worst case scenario you can switch them uh, you cut off the old one and you solder on the new one. But again, you need to be very, very careful. Do not cut both wires at the same time because that will short circuit it. Cut one, solder it onto the new connector, then cut the next one, solder it onto the new connector, and make sure you get the negatives and the positives correct, or you'll short out your blaster and blow up your battery. So, um, that I believe is the basics for now. I will go over how to properly care for your lipos in the next video. So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, if I got anything horribly wrong and need to refilm the whole thing, do please let me know. Um, and I hope this was really helpful, and thank you guys for watching.